Am I the asshole for giving the silent treatment after my GF son spilled in my car? I got a new car earlier this year and it's the first big item I've bought for myself. It's my baby and I take good care of it. This weekend I had to drive to town B for work. To get to town B I have to drive through town A which is where my girlfriend's mother is so my girlfriend asked if I can give her, my GF, and her son a ride there to visit her mother. We left yesterday and before leaving I reminded both her and her son of my number one rule. No food in the car. She said whatever, agreed and we went off. On the way her son complains about being hungry so we stop at a gas station and the two of them go off to quickly grab and eat something. After about 20 minutes they come back to the car and both holding slushies. I stop them and tell them that they can't drink that in my car and she says they can't possibly finish it fast enough without making us more late and that she wasn't even willing to do that. This resulted in a back and forth of arguing and the ultimatum was to leave them there or to suck it up. I gave in and let them in cautioning them to be careful. After about 30 minutes her son drifted off and dropped the melted slushy all over the back seat. I yelled fuck and pulled over to clean it up. After cleaning it up I got back in the driver's seat and just drove. I was bloody livid but knew fighting or arguing over this wouldn't solve anything. Still I was in no mood to talk so I just remained silent for the rest of the ride, only giving short answers when spoken to. I dropped them off at her mother's and kept driving. When I reached my lodging I saw a message from my girlfriend calling me dickhead for giving them the silent treatment and making her son feel like shit over an honest mistake. I Ada? Not the asshole, you made it very clear how important the car being clean is to you. They ignored your boundaries and exactly what you were afraid of happening happened. Not the asshole. You clearly told them no food or drink before they got in. If they were hungry, they could have had water or something with a cap or lid. Did she even offer to clean it? She should have used that opportunity to teach her son respect for someone else's property instead of expecting you to give them a free pass. Not the asshole. Your car, your rules. I also don't allow children with food and drinks, other than water, in my car. When your girlfriend gets a car of her own, she can allow her son to trash it. Am I the asshole for, selling out, on my grandma's secret recipe? Update. Original. Firstly, I opened my bakery. I found a great spot near my city's office park, main commuter route to the big city of a caterer, takeout deli that closed. We've been open since June, and business has been great with all the morning, evening traffic, and the lunch crowd from the business park. We sell cakes, pastries, breads, buns, etc. Typical bakery stuff. I also have a cook who comes in for a few hours in the morning to do eggs and stuff for breakfast sandwiches, wraps for the office folks. A few weeks after I opened Jane stopped by. She apologized and confirmed what I and others had suspected. She only cared about the cake recipe because she was jealous of my success with my custom cake business. She'd always wanted to work in food, but hated the idea of losing her evenings and working in a high-pressure kitchen. So when I suddenly started doing so well, she thought she could do the same but didn't know how to start her own catering business. I apologized too for not wanting to share the recipe but I was afraid that she would ruin my business by putting out bad cakes and no one would want to buy mine either. I then offered to have her come in three days a week to offer a soup, stew of the day during the lunch rush. I had the extra kitchen space for it, and soups, stews really do suit her style of cooking to taste. She loved the idea and they were an instant hit. She had complete freedom to create whatever two kinds of soup she wanted each day, just adding things on a whim, and they were always delicious. They got very popular quickly with the office folks, since there aren't many other takeout options nearby without driving about an extra 5-10 minutes out besides two fast food burger places. We soon expanded to her coming in every weekday, and then making a cold soup option on Fridays for the Saturday lunch, closed Sundays. It's been a great arrangement, since she keeps her evenings, weekends and gets that creative control. In the last couple weeks we've also started doing take-home heat and serve dishes too like lasagna, chicken, steak taco or subkits, etc. I'll do the pasta, bread, she does the other prep and sauces. So far they've been very popular. She's tried her hand at baking a time or two again, and has declared she just doesn't have the patience for it, and hasn't asked for the recipe again, nor has any other family. P.S. For those wondering, Grandma had a standing offer for over a year before she died when she wasn't yet sick enough to stop baking, for anyone to come over and she'd personally walk them through the recipe. She was very sad and disappointed that I was the only one who did so. The other bakers would always make excuses about time or say, 
Later, later, shortly before she died she said that since I was the only one who bothered, the recipe was mine now. It's still my best-selling cake. What a great birthday. Congratulations. Is there an acronym for, everybody wins? Great update and I'm glad you managed to find a great solution with Jane. Your grandma would be really proud of you both living your dream and fulfilling her dream for a bakery. That really makes me sad for your grandma. Like a lot. This is so beautiful it needs to be a Christmas movie. I'm not saying I want the recipe, I too lack the patience for baking nowadays, which sucks because I used to love baking. But I'm curious as fuck where Appa's and or what the cake tastes like that makes it so unique. What a great solution and compromise. Including her by leverage her strengths, you helped both her and also added to the offerings of your business. Great way to extend an olive branch. Wonderful problem solving. Am I the asshole for not doing anything for Christmas this year and making my husband livid? Dot. So I'm a stay-at-home mom with three kids. My husband works full-time and gets an okay salary but he's tightened the grip on spending for the past four months to be able to save up to go watch the football event overseas. He's literally obsessed with anything to do with football. He said he rarely ever gets to do what he wants and so I didn't want to judge him since it's his money eventually. We discussed plans for Christmas and he told me to handle everything since he won't be back till December 20th. He told me he had put aside money for Christmas decoration, food, gifts, kids needs etc. The money in total was $100. I was completely shocked I told him $100 for an entire family's Christmas celebration was ridiculously not enough. He shrugged saying it's all he's got but I pointed out how he's paying for his friends and his girlfriend's travel expenses. He told me to just, take it, but I said that if he decided to leave me with just 100 bucks then I won't be doing anything for Christmas. We had lots of arguments and couldn't get this resolved. He's in Qatar now, he left days ago. Yesterday, while I was cleaning I found an envelope with the same $100 and a note from him telling me, to make it work, I sent him a message that I've decided that I won't be doing anything for Christmas with this little money, period. He was livid he just kept sending an angry message after another calling me, spoiled and telling me to stop expecting to live like I was still living in my parents' house and to stop trying to rob the kids of enjoying the holidays like the other kids. I haven't replied but he's livid saying I'm punishing him for going and trying to guilt him using his own money. In ta this sounds like financial abuse. Why is it his money when you are in charge of household admin and childcare while he waltzes off with his friends to pay thousands to watch a bunch of overpaid Egypts kick a ball around a stadium built on eco-destruction and human rights violations? No sane person from this century could pull of Christmas with 100 bucks unless they go in for petty theft on a grand scale. Ultimatum time. He treats you as an equal financially or you leave and get child support. Not the asshole. As has been pointed out, this is called financial abuse. Take your kids, go to your parents, have a beautiful Christmas without your husband and get a divorce. Not the asshole you have three weeks to get a lawyer, move out and get a job. You and children are at the very bottom of his priority list. That is not going to change. Good luck. Am I the asshole for telling my daughter she has to go see her mom? My ex and I got divorced when our daughter Emma, F14, was a few months old. At first she had primary custody and I had Emma every weekend. When Emma was 9 she told us she wants to spend more time with me and we decided to have her every other week. When she turned 10 she told us that she thinks spending the weekend with a parent was better but she wants to spend the weekends with her mom and be with me the rest of the time. After that she told us that this is too tiring for her and she wants to go there every other weekend. A year ago she decided that she wants to go there once a month. Now she is telling me that she doesn't want to go there at all. I told her that can't happen and she has to go see her mom. We got into an argument and I got angry and told her unless she goes to see her mom I'm going back to our original custody agreement and she has to live with her mom. She called me an asshole but went to her mom's home and now she won't answer my call. Buddy, every alarm in your head should go on. You need to talk to her if something is wrong at her mom's place. Edit. You are the asshole. Info. Have you tried to find out why she doesn't want to be with her mom? This really seems like there's something going on over there to make her not want to go at all. You are the asshole based on the info. Your daughter is old enough to decide how much she wants to see her mother so you can't force her to go. Have a talk with her and UX. Do you know why your daughter doesn't want to go there? Please try to figure that out first. Maybe her mom is treating her badly. Maybe she is trying to manipulate you. 
However, I do think it's a bit odd she doesn't want to see her mom that often but does go there when she doesn't get her way. So, as her parent, why aren't you looking into why she doesn't want to go? This seems like it should be your very first question. Edit for judgment. You are the asshole.